Thank you, Andy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Forest Meetup. Todd, welcome to this. So, to partly, uh, tonight is about, I wanted to uh, announce sort of the release of Hydrogen. One point, I know that this is a project that seems to have to be in the background for a little bit of time. Um, so, it's leveraging uh, some work that I've been doing for about a year. And then something Steve kind of took an interest in. We decided to uh, put this together and put it out. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more, more about Hypertree specifically in a few minutes. I just want to give a little bit of background on Hypergrid, which is the core piece that I that I do. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm an engineer at OpenFin. I started out uh, coding, uh, doing user interfaces about 20 years ago in Smalltalk. I moved to Java. Uh, for about 15 years, and part of that I was doing KQ. Uh, I got used to that uh, from a guy named Ed Bill, who I knew, and, um, and then I met Stephen after I learned a lot from him, I still do. Uh, and then recently, in a, few years, uh, a few years ago, I got interested in JavaScript. Um, uh, it initially had uh, seemed like it was going to be a real language, uh, but it became obvious uh, recently that it really is kind of becoming a very a major player. Um, so that's what I do full time now, JavaScript, HTML5, and Q. Um, so um, I'm, I'm interested in graphics mostly, uh, and it's a funny, funny thing. Uh, we have a, a, a customer uh, that's uh, a major bank, and they were kind of on the fence about moving to HTML5, which is our, our core product. It relies on that. They're, 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 what was keeping them from moving there was they came from a grid-rich native uh, programming environment. They decided that HTML5 wasn't ready for them, so they, they, they weren't interested in our product. And we said, no, actually it is. It's just the approach that people take. And so I was handed uh, the task of building an HTML5 grid that was comparable to what you would see uh, from native experience. Um, and so that's the far side of cartoons. <laughs> it's, I use a lot of uh, video game techniques in order to get the performance there. Uh, so, uh, just quickly, what I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about my company, which I did. What's the hypergrid? Why? Uh, which I've already talked about. I want to show an example on uh, usage of the hypergrid. We call that hypergrid. We demo that all the time. Um, uh, what are the basic features? I'll run through those quickly, just because I want to get to the hypertree. Actually, uh, I'll explain what hypertree is. Uh, why did we come? Why did we decide to use? Uh, where did the hypertree come from? And why, why is it there? Uh, and I'll run through the basic features, which I think uh, a lot of people are going to really uh, going to see a lot of value there. Um, just a quick description of what the architecture is and what are the pieces, the moving parts for that. And then uh, I want to show you some really neat functionality that uh, my company offers uh, around HTML5 applications and other native. Uh, assets that may, may, might need to be deployed with that, um, specifically Q and Q scripts. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, the direction that we're heading. Okay. So what's OpenFin? That's my company. I'm an engineer there. Uh, our core product is a desktop container. I think of it as like Chrome Plus Plus, or it allows you to break out of the browser and you can deploy HTML5 applications to the desktop all of the native applications. So you get a lot of other features you have. Uh, there's a sandbox model, there's a communication model. Uh, it's got connectors to other platforms and languages. So it's an integration path, it's a migration path. It's a really wonderful product. And if you haven't checked it out, you really should take a look at it. Um, so, uh, what's Hypergrid? I mentioned this a moment ago. Our customers are the financial community, and we had a major customer that was on the fence. And this is this is where Hypergrid came from. It was a challenge that we accepted, and we out there and now. Uh, we're, we're, we're generalizing it and making it available to the community uh, as a whole. It's an open source pro project. Anyone can go in and contribute if you want. Please do. It's getting, it's getting rather large. So, uh, just to show you an example of what it's capable of, it looks the, the generic look of it is like Excel, but if you, if you want, it's very easily customizable. You don't really have to write any code. I'll show you this one. This is just this is a simple configuration. Let's 
show this is sort of one of our main demos. We call this hyperbrow. One of my co-engineers did a little bit of work on this. It's pretty simple. This is running inside of the thing. Okay. And we can see this is an HTML5 application. So notice there's no browser. This is a desktop application, right? So we believe the future of, of desktop software is HTML5. This is an example of what we can do with a, with a, with a container. So hyperblotter is So this is an example of hybrid, and it's just a, there's probably uh, 10 lines of code to customize it to look like this, versus the, the general way uh, uh, you see it when you pull it up. So you know, there's smart line graphs, you've got um, fading, you know, red and green, background, data-driven, uh, 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 formatting, and uh, so it, and it's highly performant, right? So just, this is just an example. run through the, the basic demo and just kind of show you guys a little bit about what it does. This the, the stock I believe. So let me go to the GitHub website. There's quite a bit of documentation. So one of the things you'll notice is this is using Polymer, okay, relevance, and, and we're going to be moving off of Polymer soon uh, for various reasons. I, I can talk offline about that why. So this is the stock example. This is a, a, a 300 column by a 5,000 word table, and it's just showing that, that it's capable of handling a lot of updates. This is all data inside JavaScript, which isn't ideal. Um, but ideally, you want to use Q to drive this. Um, and I'll show a really neat example of that. So, um, this is just, uh, this is a quadrillion row example showing off the virtualization capabilities. Uh, you can rearrange columns visually, right? It's got full selection semantics, uh, row, a column resizing. It's, it's all the thing, all the basic functionality for a grid component that you would expect in a native application. It supports JSON formatting, auto size of columns, uh, arbitrary numbers of fixed rows, uh, headers, and columns. Uh, so currently, what we, uh, the de facto grid that people use is something called snippet, and that's what we've gone head to head with. Uh, so, an interesting thing is Q tree. Uh, oh, can you hear me now? Oh, sorry. <laughs> They said, make sure you get your mouth next to the microphone. I thought it was close enough. So, <laughs> um, so I'll get to this in a moment. But this is, there's really true, a lot of power here uh, out of the box. And you just simply plug your queue, uh, any arbitrary queue table under this. And, and you get a lot of analytic capability. And I'll go through these specifically momentarily. Um, the last thing I wanted to show, uh, Gamerfly, this, is a, this was just to show off kind of these are, these are this is a five-line program using hypertree, hypergrid, excuse me. So, um, so anyway, that, there's a lot more features here. I could, it, it would uh, take quite a while to go through them, but we're trying to accommodate a lot of customers and all their needs. So if there's something that you need, it's probably already in there. And it's, doc it's documented. The readme is like 40 pages long at this point. Um, let me move back to the presentation. So the other uh, we've got there's a there's a simple queue integration. So there's a small script you can load, and you get the old queue show that we used to from K from years ago. A simple table that pops up, and you can stream up and down. It keeps up um, 
with that. And again, this is all for building HTML5 applications. So there's no reason to stick in, stay in Java or .NET anymore. There's this components out there that integrates tightly with Qt and then it works for you So, so uh, many questions about Hyperbear, which is the basis for what I, this is what I used to build, what we call Hypertree or Hypergrid. Hypertree is actually a, a, a project that Stephen Apter put together, um, and uh, it integrates with Hypergrid. I had to build a Hypergrid component to talk with you get the protocol that they talk. And uh, Hypertree, let me go into that. Uh, what is Hypertree? Uh, it's a, 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 a seriously powerful analytical tool for Q. Um, it's got a recursive aggregated tree table, that's his definition. Uh, but there's also three competitive capability, and I'll show you that momentarily. Um, and so what this does is out of the box, instead of writing any Q code, you, you, uh, 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 Q mortals can go in and get a, a, a reasonable level of, of functionality and, and, and expressiveness in terms of slicing the data and looking at it in various ways. Um, so basically what we're seeing here is that there's a, a highly denormalized table under the covers. There's a bunch of columns that are rolled up, aggregated upon, and then there's a hierarchy that's generated from an arbitrary set of, of uh, symbolic columns. But you don't have to use symbolic columns excuse, exclusively. It could be dates. You could even use numbers, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But uh, any kind of, any column that you want, you can define uh, the, uh, the hierarchy column. So let me let me pull that up again. Let's we'll talk about it. Oops. Oops, sorry. So I have Q running in the background right now. So we have, I don't know, there's 10 columns there. So there's maybe five symbolic columns. This is generated from a trades table. So under the covers, there is a, there's a, a simulation of a, of a trades table. There's a simulation of market data. Uh, there's a, uh, a table that represents trading groups and traders. And then this is all kind of munched together into this. And then uh, there's, uh, uh, there's mar market data. Uh, like, there's like sector information, industry information that's bolted on uh, to the key, which is symbol. So this gives us a couple columns to build a hierarchy. Right? So that's what we see. The result of that is exactly Oops. So that's what's, can everyone see that? Is that, is that better? Okay. So, uh, You'll see the P and L is the sum of the realized and the unrealized, and that looks, uh, you know, that's really not a very good P and L. <laughs> um, so what I can do is, is I can drill down. So a you know, typical thing is you sort descending on the absolute value of the P and L. So if you see a problem, hopefully it won't all be red lines. There'll be one thing that you can say, hey, what's going on in my pairs strategy? I'll drill down on that. Uh, using baseball teams as trading groups. So if I drill down on that, you know, let's trade and pretend, oops, sorry. These are my traders, the baseball players. I can drill down in the portfolio and pick a particular symbol. And I can go troubleshoot what's going on. Um, so this is a, once you have your Q table, it's a matter of about five lines of code to put this whole thing together. And then it's clarity, there's no code. You basically specify what's the aggregation function in which columns do I want. So, I have to say, how do I define the hierarchy that's here for me? It's a drag and drop interface. So we see that it's the top level strategic unit is trading group. Under that is trader and symbol. I can say, hey, you know what? I want to see trader at the top. Right? Drag that up there. This is all uh, touch enabled as well. So if you wanted to do this on your iPad, you could. Right? Close this. And now we see that it's the traders that are at the top. Right? I can drill down and see what strategies are they supporting. And then within that, the different trading groups. All right, so uh, everyone gets the, 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 the hierarchy here, which is interesting. Um, oh, that's the code. What's that? 
You want to see the code? Okay, so the code for that. So this is the main script, and I would say probably 90% of this is just stuff to support the, the mock uh, trading, uh, tr uh, the mock market data, the mock trades, uh, like a trade capture system. Okay. So basically the code for this, we can see, uh, are the capital letters. So this is saying, um, I want to look at the p and table. p and uh, these are the groups by default. Um, these are, the, this, these are the, the, the main columns that I want to see, uh, and then these are the rollups that I want to have. And that's basically the gist of all you have to do to generate this, once you have your main demonized table. Right? And, and also, this is highly optimized. Uh, Stephen Apter put this together, he put a lot of thought in, into it. So it works on enormous tables, and, and you can see that we have like five second ticks happening. Does that, that answer? Alright, so back to the uh, back to the example. So I'm gonna go through some kind of some of the so uh, trades table that's probably several million in size right now. Um, it's showing me 0 through 60 rows. If I scroll down, you see uh, that, that number will change. Right. Let me, uh, let's see, let me reset the hierarchy. So, basically, this is showing me the hierarchy here, strategy and the trader symbol. And what sorts of uh, by default they send you P and L you know, absolute value. So first button is uh, expand the entire hierarchy. So now we can see all 99,000 rows here, right? And you can sit through there. That's the entire hierarchy expanded. Oops. Collapse that. Okay. Uh, so here's a really, really neat. Feature. So we're going to go into pivot mode when I push this button. So notice the second level down are the trade groups, in this case baseball teams. Right? If I push this button, they become the x-axis, and we see that here. x-axis is unit. The y-axis stays the same, but the z dimension is now, we're seeing a slice of the z dimension, right? And that, that's the p and m. So what was the next one? I think it was uh, realized. So if I click this, you see the realized slice? Unrealized slice. So what, what, we're, what we're seeing is a cube right now. And I'm going through the different layers and seeing, seeing, seeing the different values at those, at those levels in the cube. So that's kind of an interesting way to, to look at your data if you want. And again, you can redefine your hierarchy and look at it in another way. Uh, also, I mean, keep in mind, you've written no code at this point, right? So, uh, a quick feature is, I actually can sort, there's one that will call sorting. So, the sub sub sorting one is another one. This switches the top two uh, levels of the hierarchy. So, if you see it, the groups here, see strategy and unit. If I push this button, it swaps those two, which is a useful thing. You 
might want to just do that quickly. Okay? And the next thing, which is a really different feature of the model, is rotate of the hierarchy. So it says strategy, unit, trade, or simple, right? If I push this, we'll see that unit is now the first thing. Tra uh, trader is similar in, in order, and strategy is rotating to the bottom. So this allows me to cycle through my hierarchy. In ways, so I can see, you can almost think of these as different reports. And this obviously goes the other way. So if you want to drill down, I say you see something that's alarming, you want to drill down, it's got a sort of volume. And you, you don't want this data to be bouncing around, you can pause the data here, and then go drill down and take a look at what's, the, what's going on. Right? Okay. Okay, so uh, my time my time limit is almost up here. So <laughs> anyway, this is uh, a, a joint project that I had done uh, with Stephen after. It's out there. It's free. It's an amazing amount. It's super powerful, sophisticated analytics that it, it's really easy to use. I, I recommend checking it out. Uh, let me wrap up quickly uh, because yeah. next time. There's another version of this you can start up that's there where if you've got seriously heavy computation going on, uh, you have another process that's running that's, that's not idle, it's churning the whole time and it's, yeah. it's pushing the data into an idle, a mostly idle process that serves the group. That's essentially the idle framework architecture. Um, the last and final thing I wanted to show you, which is really exciting thing, is this. And I'll take this a moment here. Bear with me. This is our, we call this our packaged application. That's my Windows. So, you have a, a, a queue application that you want to deploy to the desktop. It's a desktop application.